guys, it's Tammy, and if you saw my Joann's haul, you saw me haul this. I got this Wool in the Game hat kit, so it's going to look like that. This is the Happy Days beanie, and it says it should take about three hours, and it comes with all of the instructions and everything you need, including a little needle, so I thought that was kind of cool, and I kind of even like this bag that it came in. I don't know that I will keep it, but it's an option. I'm going to put my little cardboard down here. So I'm going to start this as a knit with me and kind of show you the pattern and what I'm going to do. And it's really cool to me that it came with the needles. So this is my first wool in the gang anything. And these are US size 17. It tells me that it's a 12 millimeter. I wish it did say 17 on here. It says 12 millimeter in a couple of spots, but it doesn't say size 17, which is kind of a bummer, but I don't know that I will remember that either, but I guess I will have to try or look it up. Usually when things say 12 millimeter, they also will say 17, size US 17 or whatever. But there are three different patterns in here. One is for the beginner with a garter stitch. One is an easy with a moss stitch. And one is an intermediate with a twisted rib stitch. And I think I'm going to try that one because I haven't done that before. So I'm going to try that one. And um, yeah, I'm just going to follow the instructions. I kind of like to have my instructions like this. And it says to cast on 44 stitches using the cable cast on technique and then leave a 16 inch tail when you make your slip knot. And then it says knit one twist, knit one stitch twisted, bring the yarn to the front, purl one stitch twisted, return the yarn to the back and knit the next stitch twisted. Now, of course, I'm not exactly sure what that means, so I'm going to have to look that up, but then I will tell you guys what it looks like. But first, let's go ahead and cast on the 44 stitches with the cable cast on. And I haven't really used a ball of yarn like this either, so I'm not exactly sure the best way to do it. I do like to keep my this to take a picture. That way, afterward, I know what I used and I can put any notes in it, whether or not I liked it or whatever. Um, it kind of looks like this pulls out. And maybe that's the way I use it. Or maybe there's an end in, the, in this that I should be using. Okay, it kind of looks like that maybe. So let me try to tuck this back around. I have not used a ball of yarn such as this one yet. So this is my first. But it looks like it's about the same. So it said to leave a 16 inch thing that you will use. I think that's too long, so I'm just gonna do my own thing and leave less because I don't like having that much of a tail, especially not on a hat. That's a lot to weave in. I like kind of a smaller tail, so I'm just putting my slip knot in. And then, for those of you that may not know what a cable cast on is, is you take um, and you do a slip knot, and then, if I remember right, you do one stitch on, so it's kind of like a long tail cast on, but you only stitch one. And then you take your second needle, so your right hand needle and you put it between those two stitches and you take the working yarn put it around and then you pull that up through the middle of those two stitches then you turn this and put it on Whoops. twist it and put it on I don't know if the twist is actually necessary but I like the twist so I say to do the twist 
So again, you just put it through, making sure you don't split the yarn. Put this over. I don't know if it matters which way you put it over. And then pull it through, twist the stitch, and put it on. So now I have four stitches, and then I'm just kind of pulling, giving it a little bit of a pull. I don't want it to be too tight, and I want to be able to not split the wool. And this is big, thick, nice wool, so I do like this yarn a lot. It says 44, so I'm going to have a little ways here, guys. Ooh, and that one I kind of am butchering, so... I want it to make a nice line on the bottom. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Off to a good start, huh? Maybe I should go with the beginner <laughs> stitch. No, I think it's fine. I just don't know which way I'm supposed to wrap that, but I'm doing what feels right. So this is crafting. I kind of treat it as such. Six, seven, I think. I'm going to count them again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I am doing this kit as it says, um, so I'm not going to do it on the round and I'm using the sticks that they gave me, but honestly, if I were doing this hat without these instructions and if this wasn't my first kit doing it with them, I would do this on the round and not on wooden sticks. Um, not that there's anything wrong with wooden sticks, just that since it's a hat, I would knit it in the round. That just seems to be easier to... The, which is probably why they said to actually make a longer one of these because you can use it when you're sewing the seam now that I'm thinking about it. So maybe I should have listened to them, but I didn't. And it won't be the first mistake I've made ever or anything that I might regret later. But <clears throat> on the other hand, I'm sure that it will be just fine. I can figure it out, so I'm not worried. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, is that 12? 12, okay. I wasn't sure if that was two or not. This yarn is very bulky and very easy to uh, split, so be careful if, if you have this kit. 12, 13, 14, 15, 15 16 17 I'm twisting it as I'm putting it on and that works for me hopefully um, you guys can see what I'm doing okay this one's 20 twist it put it on and give it a little 
time. So we're 20 stitches in, <laughs> 24 to go. 21. Six. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. And if you guys can see, I'm filling up this pretty good. So I'm gonna, it's gonna be kind of tight. I'm gonna just count it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So I have 30 on there so far. 31, Thirty-eight, thirty-nine. Make sure it doesn't go off the end. 40 and what I mean by that make sure it doesn't go off the end of this now this has a pretty big ending bobble on it so it should go off but just be sure because you're pushing them on there pretty good have four more to go 41 42 it's also important to make sure that you're doing this on the body and not just on the tip of the needle because you want this, the stitches to all be the same. 43. 43. And 44. Now if I were super confident in my work I wouldn't go back and recount but I am going to just because I am still kind of 
anal and new too. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44. Okay, so we are set. Now I'm going to put you on pause and I will be right back. Okay, so this is the twisted rib stitch and it says to start off, it says knit one and then purl one, knit one, purl one, but they all need to be twisted stitches and looks like I will end on a purl stitch. So let's just go ahead and start this. So I, thankfully, the Wool and the Gang has a YouTube channel, and they have instructions or video and video instructions on how to do these stitches as well. So the knit, twisted knit stitch, you take your stitch and you put your right needle in the back to knit, and then I knit just like I'm gonna knit, and I pull this through. And pull this off so my twisted stitch the twist comes from using the back of the stitch instead of the front of the stitch so now I'm going to do a twisted purl stitch where I bring it to the front just like I usually would and instead of knitting or instead of purling on the front one I purl in the back one so I'm going to push this through just like so and then bring this around and come out and off. And that is a twisted purl stitch. So why do I have three stitches on? Well, I must have messed something up. Okay, so let's put these back on here. So, the twisted knit stitch, I put it in the back like this and bring the stitch over and around and off. So that's one stitch. <laughs> so now the twisted purl stitch, I need to come forward like that maybe? I'm thinking. I did something wrong. Hold the yarn, oh, to the front. Maybe that's where I messed up. And then I will insert it into the back of this stitch going this way. Oops. Wrap it around and pull it through somehow. Ah, well I need to practice this a second before I teach you guys, I guess. So we have that one go like this wool is very nice, but it's hard to, okay, why do I have two stitches on here already? Oh, because I'm going over. That's what I'm doing. Oh, well, I need to go over. I need to stitch this way. I need to watch this again. So hold on just a second. Okay, so it's over. And then she goes into it like this, and then like this, and then like this. And then I should have two. Okay, that's what I did wrong. All right, so then this one, I go like this, 
That's the twisted knit stitch. And then the twisted purl stitch. If I go into it. No, that's the knit. This is the purl. Okay, I think I did it. I think I did it. I think I did it. I should have. Yes, a knit, a purl, a knit, and a purl. And then, so this is the knit again. And then this is going to be a purl again. And it kind of leaves a different look at the bottom a little bit. I don't know. I'm hoping that I'm doing it right. I think I am, so I'm teaching you guys and doing it at the same time. Nothing like that, huh? in, pulling it up, that's a twisted knit, then the twisted purl, I go from this one behind, so I'm going behind it, up through it, around, and down and off. And this one goes like that. just checking again. I'm saying that I go through the middle this way. And then around. And then down and up and off. Good. And then the twisted knit. Let's just make sure I'm doing that the right way so I'm showing you guys the right way. In, around, down, through, and off. Okay, good. Okay, I think I got it now. So now I'm going to purl. I bring the yarn in front. I go behind this stitch all the way to the back. So like all the way from the back to the middle of that stitch and then I purl it back there and bring it off and over and then for the twisted knit I go through the middle to the back of the stitch purl it, or knit it bring it forward and off so I should have and let's just double check I have a knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit. And then, so this one is a purl. I bring the yarn to the front, go through here, purl it, come through there, and off. And then knit it. Wow, the twisted knit and the twisted purl. These are new stitches to me. So I'm just going to finish this row and then for this knit with me, we are going to, I will tell you what the next step is. This is the purl and we can do that on our own and come back so I can show you, or I, yeah, we can like continue our work together, I guess. So knit, and purl, and knit.
knit and purl. This yarn is very nice. I mean, it feels luxurious. It feels awesome. It's very cushiony and very soft, but it also splits really easily. So you've got to be careful to make sure that you're not splitting the yarn with your needle. Pearl. I keep wanting to pearl the wrong stitch. Knit. And pearl. And hopefully you guys are seeing all this. It's not always easy to show you on camera and do it at the same time, but hey, we do our best, don't we? So knit. And it is nice sometimes with the big chunky yarn. And purl. And the good thing with this yarn is that it is so nice and chunky that it really won't take very long to make a project. Knit. And purl. I should end on a pearl, which is what I have, so that will be great. Go in through the back, pearl it, go down, out, and there we go. So I have finished one row of knitting and purling with the twist stitch, and I will continue this on until the beanie is six and a half inches. So just continue this same knitting and purling until, like I said, the beanie measures six and a half inches. So it'll be, I don't know, another six rows or so. And then we will be back to start the next step, which actually is kind of cool. We're doing good, guys. So just keep on keeping on with the twisted stitch, the twisted rib stitch. So you do it, knit, purl, knit, purl. So all of the purls will be purled and all of the knits will be knitted. So let me go ahead and start this again. This is a knit stitch. And so I'm going to do the twisted knit again here. And then I will do the twisted purl. Oops. And like I said, you just make sure you purl the purls and knit the knits. This is a knit. And do this until the piece measures six and a half inches. 
and we will be back. So have fun. Happy knitting. <laughs> Okay guys, so I'm back and I have six and a half inches at least of knitted pattern done. So let's, I'm just going to show you from the top to the bottom. It's actually not including this bottom last row. It's six and three quarters inches. So that's good. Um, it says six and a half inches approximately and then it says to cut your yarn leaving a tail about 16 inches long so I am just going to do this a couple of times and cut my tail so there's that and then I need to thread my tail in with the sewing needle that they provide tapestry needle. So I have a, I don't know if it'll work for that, but I have a threader. I don't know, maybe it would just be better to thread it myself. I'm not sure. Actually, that worked out better. Okay, so now that I have that, um, insert the needle and thread it through each of the stitches on your needle, starting with the one furthest from the point of the needle. So I'm going to start down here and thread each one of these on, I guess. I'm just going to pull it through just to make sure that I know that I have it. Then I'll go back in. I'm just trying to make sure that it doesn't fall off the end and I'm just threading it right through right up against the needle I'm just grabbing all of the stitches and I'm trying really hard not to split any Seems like three or four of them is about the number that works best for me anyway, to grab about that many at a time. 
and you can kind of feel it with your needle as to where you are. Kind of, it's kind of a weird feeling. Or maybe you can just tell it when you're splitting it. I don't know, but there's something, there's a feel. Kind of like a fox's tail. I have used some wool similar to this to do a finger blank or an arm blanket with um, some wool. I'm going to say from Michaels, I believe. And um, I went through that one, so I'm just trying to go through it. Um, and I got it using my coupon and I think it was like $17 for a skein, which is a lot of money in my opinion for one skein of yarn. Now it is the extra super bulky wool like this. Um, and you get more than this for sure. It was enough to make a small, like, um, baby blanket you could make or... I think I'm just, well, I know I'm using it just kind of as a couch blanket. But, um, that wool, like, you could literally, like, pull it and it would break apart. So this is a lot better quality. And it's just as chunky, if not, yeah, it's just as chunky to use. But it's it feels better. The other one looks all right for what I'm using it for, but if I were to make a blanket that I'd actually want to use, I would be afraid to use it because it, I'm afraid it will fall apart. Okay, so now that I have them all threaded through, I believe I can take off the needle. Yes. And then I just pull this and it's going to form a hat and I actually think I want to do it. It doesn't really matter. It's reversible. But as I'm pulling this, it makes a hole on the top. And then I'm going to sew this end up with what's left on my thread. I'm sure it doesn't tell me that yet, but Yes, indeed, it does. Okay, so it says to make a few small incisions this way just to prevent the thread from coming out. So I'm just kind of knitting it through both of these sides. And then I am going to turn it inside out so that I can seam up these edges best. And it says to use the vertical invisible seam routine, which I don't know what that is, but in my head, I'm just going in one of these and out the next. And that will make it pretty invisible, I believe. So if you know that technique, you can use it, but I am just doing a sewing technique that I am comfortable and know, comfortable with and know. my head I'm wondering if a fur pom-pom wouldn't be cuter than just a regular wool pom-pom but I'm not sure I want to see the picture again
And this is the next day, guys. And just so you guys know, it took me about the time that they said it would take to do this project. It was about two and a half or three hours, probably. So let's turn this around so you, we can see what it looks like. So there's the seam. It may not be invisible, but it's all right. I can probably play with it a little bit more and get some of that to show. But that can also be the back, so it's really not a big deal to me. Some of these stick up a little bigger than others, but that is a really cute hat. And it's gonna be warm. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, and I know that knitters don't appreciate this and don't do it, and so do as I say and not as I do, but I'm just tying this in a little invisible kind of a knot. But don't do that because it's illegal in knitting. You're supposed to hide all of these, and you still can. And as a matter of fact, I might just kind of take it up the back and kind of help hide some of my sewing technique. And I'm going to do the same with both of these. I'm just taking it off of my needle now. And I'm going to turn it the right side so I can actually see this. Do, 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 do. This chunky yarn I can just get by with doing it with my hand and I'm good with that actually so I'm going to go ahead and cut this off throw that away and now for the palm you can either use a pom-pom maker or we can just go ahead and make a palm. And I think with this really thick yarn, I might just make a palm. They kind of have a small palm on theirs. So let's see. This could be a huge palm. Let's see, look. They have a little, oh no, I guess it's bigger than it looks because it goes from there to there. At first I thought it was just that part, but I see it now all the way over there. It says to wrap it approximately 40 times and I didn't count, but I'm gonna say that's probably good. just going to lay this down and then I'm going to cut another piece about yay long 
And now with this piece, I'm going to lay this one down on top of it. And pull this as tight as I can. And do a knot. Making it just as tight as you can get it. And sometimes I like to go around and do the other side too, just to make sure that it's not going anywhere. So I'm just going to find the center, bring this around like so, and then tie it in another knot. I also feel like it makes sure that it's as tight as it can be. I don't know if that's true or not, but it just makes me feel better. So now take your really sharp scissors, or whatever scissors you have, and you want to cut each of these. And those scissors are not the best. And this is all there is to it, but goodness, sometimes cutting it is not as easy as it should be. This big bulky yarn. It's so pretty. And I did look on the website and you can find their kits online too. And making these with a pom-pom maker, you are way more apt to get them all the same size, so there'll be a lot less trimming with a pom-pom maker. So I probably should have used one, but... That's what I'm saying, pretty much. <laughs> Especially with this expensive yarn, you don't want to waste too much of it. So this kit, like I said, was on special at Joann's. If you watched my haul, you would have seen that I think it was $15, $14.97 or something like that. And honestly, I think it's worth it just for the skein of yarn. The yarn is so nice. Now you only get one skein. I mean, obviously there's not much left over. and. Um, if I were to work this again, I might even give myself an extra row on my hat or something like that. I just didn't know how much I would need, so I just followed the instructions. But, um, you know, a pattern is kind of like a recipe. You, you can tweak it to your own liking, whatever you like to do or however you like to do things. So be sure that you play with them if you want to. Now sometimes, like recipes, I will sometimes follow it exactly, especially if I'm not sure what I'm doing or if I'm new at it or something like that. And on this case, I am both. Now this is a heck of a palm because this yarn is so awesome. I don't even know which one's my... I've lost my holders. This is a nice long one, but I don't see another nice long one. <laughs> Where did you go? Oh, yikes, I'm pulling that out. I did not mean to do that. So make sure you get it pretty tight because it is crazy. Oh, there's a nice long one. Is that the same nice long one I just had? Chances are good. Okay, I'm gonna hold those two. These are gonna be my two ends. And then I am just going to trim this bad boy.
like how it's looking. sitting here cutting this and I'm thinking about my kids and them starting back to school and all that jazz. It's an awesome ball. They will tell you that. And I think I might cut, stop cutting on it for now and then maybe look back at it and do what I need to do some more because I know me and I will never be done if I don't just say okay you're done for now and that's not always a good thing because sometimes I'll end up with nothing okay the ones that are obviously So let me get rid of all of this. The palm is as big as the hat. Oh my word. <laughs> okay, so I am just pushing it through here. And then I am going to put it through here and put this one 180 degrees difference. And then I am again going to be the world's worst knitter and just tie this. And I think I'm just going to leave those strings in there. Oh my gosh, I love it. Okay, so there is our pom-pom hat from Wool and the Gang, and it really literally took about two and a half or three hours. It didn't take any time at all, and what an awesome project. It's so much fun. Now this ball might still need some work, but I wish you guys could feel it. It is so soft, and it's just kind of fun, and I like how it kind of frays, so I'm going to let it do that, do its thing for a little bit and then I will come back and make sure that I have it all trimmed up. But there we go. So thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye.